Now to a call Curtis investigation after the state took money straight out of a Grass Valley grandmother's bank account. The state admits that a criminal really owes the money, so Curtis investigates how this could happen. Well, we have learned when a felon goes to a prison, they can give any name, any social security number or birth date they want. People aren't really checking, but how does that lead to a grandma having money plucked right out of her savings account? Come on, Coach. Living in this rural Grass Valley setting, Eric Heminger likes having his mom, Jeannie Miller, nearby. She has a home on the same property. It's nice to have her around in her golden years. Eric helps her manage her finances, so when she had a $721 bank withdrawal from the Franchise Tax Board, Eric looked into it. It was from the people who collect taxes, so she thought it was maybe a late fee for taxes and we'd, we hadn't filed on time. So I just figured it was something I owe and I was going to pay it. But the paperwork from the state shows it's a court order debt owed to the Victim Compensation and Government Claims Board. The order from the state has Jeannie's social security number on it, but it's for a felon currently in prison named Jermaine Kirk. I contacted the bank and they said there's nothing they can do. It's a court order and they have to abide by it and that we would have to talk to the state. The Victims Compensation Board tells us Kirk, a convicted burglar, gave the wrong social security number. But how could the state allow money to be wrongfully taken from this senior citizen's account? They should be double checking. John Cupall of the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association thinks the state should have checked to see if Jeannie's account was linked to the felon before taking her money. We have an innocent victim here who's having money taken out of her account uh, illegally and inappropriately. But the Victims Board says they have no ability to double check Social Security numbers provided by inmates. The Franchise Tax Board says it can, but quickly adds this wasn't their fault. They refused to go on camera answering how this happened. Jeannie's family wasn't happy to hear it could be 16 weeks to get her money back. Then I was told that, hey, you're not special. She's not special. There's a lot of people before you and after you that the same thing has happened to. Once we got involved, Jeannie right away received an apology from the Victims Compensation Board, and she got her money back. Still unbelievable that it would happen. So the question remains, how can this happen? Would the state be able to pluck money out of your bank account, even if you don't owe it? The Franchise Tax Board refuses to answer our questions. We did learn from Jeannie's bank they should have caught this, too, considering the name on the account did not match the one on the order. So an inmate can give whatever information that they want? The state prison system says, yeah, they know it's a problem, and they're working on possibly validating these Social Security numbers when the felon gets checked in. So now that we've established that they do this, how often does the Franchise Board do this? They tell they don't keep track on how often these errors happen. However, they do say it's rare. But it's it's really concerning. I mean, this woman, they just took the money out of her account. You and her son ch double-checked and said, wait a minute, you don't owe this money. And then it was going to take all that time for her to get her own money back. Yeah, this is ridiculous. You think, they, you think they'd check. Yeah. It's the right thing to do. Well, and it would be nice if the Franchise Tax Board would answer some questions uh -huh. about how this happened. Well, exactly. All right, if you have a consumer problem you can't resolve, maybe we can. You call our hotline Monday through Friday at 916-374-1343, or you can always go to our website, cbssacramento.com, click on Call Curtis, and fill out our form. Well,